Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Anna, AKA NeuroGal MD. I'm a double board certified neurologist and I love sharing educational and entertaining content about the brain. Today, we're going to be exploring the perplexing case of Sarah, a 22 year old medical student who was my patient and I saw her because she had been experiencing sudden decline in her mental and cognitive health over the course of several months. Sarah was in the prime of her life when I saw her. She was pursuing her dreams as a medical student and she was so passionate about becoming a future doctor and taking care of patients but her promising path took a dramatic turn for the worse when she was brought to the emergency room after experiencing several months of psychotic behavior and confusion. Sarah's mother was the one who brought her to the hospital and she said that for the past two months, Sarah had been experiencing anxiety and memory problems. These symptoms had been dismissed as anxiety by her primary care physician who started her on an anti-anxiety medication. But despite this, her symptoms worsened. She became paranoid, accusing her mother of trying to steal her car and having an affair with her boyfriend. I evaluated Sarah in the emergency room. She was confused. She didn't recognize her mother. She kept trying to pull out her IVs. She then had a seizure right in front of me, manifesting as generalized shaking or convulsions of all of her extremities. She also had elevated blood pressure and heart rate, as well as a fever. So what could have caused these symptoms in Sarah? We ran a series of tests, including a CT scan of her head, which came back normal, as well as an MRI, which revealed bright spots or hyperintensities in the temporal lobes of her brain. The temporal lobes are critical regions responsible for emotions, memory, and auditory and language processing. These findings suggested that something was causing inflammation in Sarah's brain. We suspected an infection, with herpes encephalitis being the most common culprit affecting these areas of the brain. So we performed a spinal tap, also known as a lumbar puncture, to analyze her cerebrospinal fluid. There were no signs of infection, but the fluid showed evidence of inflammation. We decided to test for antibodies often involved in autoimmune conditions. When Sarah's cerebrospinal fluid tested positive, for NMDA receptor antibodies, the puzzle pieces started to fit together. We finally had an answer. Sarah was diagnosed with something called NMDA receptor encephalitis, a form of autoimmune encephalitis. This condition occurs when the body's immune system mistakenly attacks healthy brain cells, leading to severe inflammation in the brain. This can manifest as a range of baffling symptoms, from sudden psychiatric changes to seizures to abnormal movements. Autoimmune encephalitis is particularly tricky because its early symptoms can mimic psychiatric disorders. That's why it's crucial to thoroughly evaluate anyone with new onset psychosis to rule out underlying neuroinflammation. With the diagnosis in hand, we started Sarah on a comprehensive treatment plan. This included immunotherapy as well as anti-epileptic medications to control her seizures. Additionally, Sarah underwent a full body CT scan, which revealed a tumor on her ovary. Her type of encephalitis, specifically called NMDA receptor encephalitis, is often associated with a type of ovarian tumor called ovarian teratoma. Surgeons promptly removed Sarah's tumor, which was a critical step in her treatment. With the tumor removed, as well as continued support from physical speech and occupational therapy, Sarah made remarkable progress over the following months. Her seizures stopped, her confusion lifted, and she started to regain her memory. Eventually, she was able to return to her medical studies. Although many patients with autoimmune encephalitis continue to experience a degree of cognitive impairment for at least several months after treatment, typically with symptoms similar to stable schizophrenia spectrum disorders, Sarah was lucky in that she experienced full recovery. I created this video to raise awareness about autoimmune encephalitis, a disorder that many outside of the fields of neurology and psychiatry know very little about. It's often difficult to diagnose early, especially if the patient's support system and healthcare providers aren't familiar with the disorder. Increased awareness and thorough evaluation by clinicians can significantly improve the prognosis for people who are affected with autoimmune encephalitis. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this story fascinating, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated for more brain mysteries and insights. We'll see you next time. Bye.